2015 Honda CRV by Jeremy Dotter. All right, so um, the, some of the things that people are going to ask you right off the bat about the difference between the 2015 and the 2014 is, you know, what does this have that mine didn't have? And so for the 2015, it was really a big technology upgrade. Uh, so some of the things that you're going to see on the EX and above trim levels is your touch entry is a big deal. So when you just touch the inside of the door handle, it'll unlock. Push button to lock it as you walk away so you don't have to dig your keys out of your purse or pocket. Um, a lot of the outside looks the same, but they did change some things on the front. The grill's a little bit different. Um, EX and above is going to give you LED headlights, uh, or daytime running lights rather. So that gives it kind of a little bit elegant up styling there. Uh, it did switch from just the regular um, direct, or regular uh, fuel injected engine into a direct fuel injected engine, which is Honda's Earth Dreams engine. Um, horsepower is at 185 horsepower, um, and it also switched over to a CVT transmission. So people who had the five-speed automatic transmission now have the CVT transmission, which is going to help with fuel economy or around town more so because it'll um, always find the accurate gear ratio to be in to help maximize your fuel economy. Um, the other thing that was introduced for the uh, CRV was, uh, along with the push button start, was also the lane watch. So that's been the biggest upseller for people going from even a 14 to turn it in and get into the 2015. Being able to turn on your blinker and be able to look at the um, touchscreen audio display to see what's over on that passenger side of the vehicle. Um, it gives you a lot more visibility and the thing I like to point out to my customers is the fact that if there's a bunch of people in the car or you're hauling around your kids or you got it loaded with stuff, you can't always see clearly out of the vehicle. So this puts your eyes on the outside of the vehicle to be able to see things that might be in your blind spot before you move over, that fast moving motorcycle that sneaks into your spot before you move over. So it also gives you some imaginary lines to know how far back they are. The red line is going to symbolize 10 feet. And then you got two orange lines. The first one's 35 feet, and the furthest one back is going to be 75 feet to give you an idea how far back that is. Um, so this is the EXL model. This is going to be um, give you everything without the navigation or the stuff that comes on the touring package. Um, but the EX model is the one that saw the biggest improvement because not only are you getting all these touch entry, push button start, lane watch features, but you also is the first vehicle that Honda brought out with the heated cloth seats and you also are getting a power seat. So if you get that customer that's coming in and they say, oh, well, I've always had to get the EXL model because I have to have a power seat. Well, not anymore. They can get into the EX model and it also gives them the ability to in the winter have those heated cloth seats without having to go to the leather model if they don't want to. Um, Another big uh, improvement um, was if you got somebody that's on an LX model, one of the biggest complaints on the LX model for 2014 or before that was that the passenger seat didn't have an armrest. So in 2015 what they did was they switched out the center console for having a large wide armrest that is shared between both the driver and the passenger and it has actually got the ability to slide forward and backward so that it can hit different people's arms to make it comfortable for everybody. Um, the cup holders uh, are adjustable, so you can actually pull them out to get in there and clean. So, you know, you get that spilled pop, it's hard to clean out of those regular cup holders. These just pull right out. So you can clean out the compartment, or if you don't really need the cup holders where they are, you got another compartment to throw your phone or, you know, whatever you're carrying along with you. just clipped back into place. Uh, one of the other nice things is it's got two USB plugs inside the armrest when you go to the EX and above and a power outlet in there so you got multiple phones that can be charged at the same time or stream Pandora with one through the stereo while you got your phone connected and charged uh, in the other one. Uh, you still get your backup camera and on the CRV um, since they started in 2012 you got the three different views. Um, which is your wide angle, which is the most popular because if you're in a parking lot, obviously, you put it in reverse, you can see all the way down the aisle if there's a car or people walking towards you. Uh, then you have your normal view, which is going to keep things more in perspective as you back out, um, so it's not so stretched. And then you also have a top down, so if you ever decided to have to back up real tight to something, or if you put a trailer hitch on and you wanted to pull a light duty trailer up to 1,500 pounds, um, then you can back right up tight to it without having that second person have to guide you into it. Um, so that's pretty much it for that. Um, one of the biggest um, things that people really like about the new body style in general, even 12, 13, 14, is how the seats fold down now. So um, there's two different ways to fold the seats down. The first one 
uh, from the side is you just pull that little nylon strap and the base flips forward and then the headrest drops down automatically so that the backrest can drop down into the floor. Um, by changing that from the 2011 and earlier body style, you're gaining five more inches of depth um, because what used to happen is the backrest would fold down on top of the seat and then the whole thing would have to tumble forward and then you had to get an anchor strap to bolt it basically to the side of the wall so that it didn't fall, fall down on some of the stuff that you were um, hauling. So you don't have to worry about that anymore because it's all spring operated. Um, to put it back up, you just lift it up until it clicks and kind of slam down that base till it clicks and that's reloading the spring that operates the whole entire function. Um, the other thing that I really like about this is the headrest in the back that flip down. Um, now I left them folded down from, from pulling that down, but you can actually put them down just by pulling up on this nylon strap that's right above the shoulder on the uh, backrest and that'll flip the headrest down, um, which gives you a little bit better visibility if you don't have passengers in the back to be able to see through without having those headrests in the way. But they're always there, so if you have passengers hop in, all they gotta do is click them up into, up into place. So the other thing for 2015 is CRV has never had rear ventilation before. Uh, this doesn't have a separate control, but it actually has the ventilation that's pumped through so you can turn it on or off and allow the fans, fans to blow air directly back to those rear, uh, rear passengers so everybody can get cooled off really fast or heated up really fast. Um, moving on to the back of the vehicle. Um, like I said, there's two ways to put the seats down. So the first was on the side with the nylon strap. The second are these two handles on the side. Hey, you just give a quick pull and it makes it really easy to load in any long cargo or luggage or whatever it is that you got that you got to haul through uh, in the car so that's easy your tire is still down underneath the floor with your jack and tools to um, to be able to do a change if you need to um, and one of the biggest things too when they came out with this new body style was they uh, announced to us that this is the second lowest cargo loading area on an SUV so there's only one other car in the market that is as easy to load things in and out of it as, as our vehicle. Um, one of the things from the back that they also changed was they painted this rear bumper. 2014 and before had a just black plastic bumper. Um, it didn't, the reflectors were actually down here. Uh, so they raised those a little bit for better visibility. Gave it uh, the painted bumper here and also the silver trim pieces painted in. Uh, that's, that's new also. Um, Easy to reach. Oh, the other thing that they changed was the shape of this cargo lid. Um, the 2011 and older model was up a little bit taller, a little bit harder to reach up to pull down. Um, so by giving it more of a up and squared off, it made it easier for people to reach to be able to pull it down. Uh, and then also, if you're looking for a power lift tailgate, uh, CRV Touring model, it's the first time that Honda has brought a power lift tailgate into a vehicle. But you do have to go to the Touring model to get that. Uh, your backup camera is located right directly underneath of the H. Uh, every once in a while I tell people to just give it a little wipe with your thumb too because, uh, you know, if you get a little rain spit out or snow or whatever on there, it you know, gets all fuzzy on your camera and you can't figure out why. Uh, this is the all-wheel drive model. Uh, Honda's all-wheel drive works, uh, you know, different from other people's all-wheel drive. Some people think when it says all-wheel drive it means all wheels all the time. Um, that's not how Honda's works. Honda has power ready all the time to operate those back wheels. Um, but what will happen is um, the old CRVs used to be a um, reactive all-wheel drive, which meant the wheels had to slip in order for it to kick power to the rear wheels. Um, now it's a proactive or um, it's a proactive and a reactive four-wheel drive. What that means is that if you are climbing a hill, uh, an incline, it'll automatically engage all four wheels, so it doesn't wait for it to slip before you have to kick in and get that um, that traction. Um, so that's one way that it does it. Also, in really cold uh, temperatures, it's got the uh, outdoor temperatures in the new CRV. So if it's below freezing outside and you're at a standstill, it'll use all four wheels to get you moving. And then after 18 miles an hour, it goes back to just a front wheel drive unless the front wheel slip. So it's, it's, it's proactively putting it in four wheel drive to get you moving. And then it will only kick in again if it slips at that point. So it um, saves you a lot of gas money that way too, so you're not slipping all the time. Um, and the all-wheel drive only gets one mile gallon per gallon less than the two-wheel drive or the front-wheel drive model, um, which gets the two-wheel drive or front-wheel drive gets a uh, 34 miles to the gallon on the highway, whereas this gets 33, which again, if you have somebody who's looking at the previous body style or they're driving a 2011 or older, um, they only got 30 miles to the gallon on the highway with their all-wheel drive. So um, that was a big improvement too. Three, three miles per gallon is a pretty, pretty big difference in the same size vehicle. So, um, 
Um, this particular model, the um, LX, EX, and EXL, you're going to get a 17 inch wheel. On the LX, you get a 17 inch alloy wheel, or I mean steel wheel, and on the EX and EXL, you get a 17 inch alloy. But if you step up to the touring model, you're going to get an 18 inch alloy wheel that's really sharp, will look really sporty, and it's got a little bit lower profile um, all wheel tire on that. Um, on the touring model, you're going to get Honda's new sensing suite things, uh, which are going to be um, the adaptive cruise control, which uses both a camera that's mounted above the rear view mirror and also a radar sensor that is built into the H on the grill. Um, and so what that does when you set your cruise control, it's going to keep you a safe distance behind the vehicle that you're traveling behind uh, when you have your cruise set. And you can adjust the distance on how far back you want to um, stay behind that vehicle. Uh, so you just set your temp or your speed, whatever you want to go, and then if somebody gets over in front of you or you get behind somebody else, it'll keep you a certain distance behind that person until they get out of your way, and then it'll get you back up to the speed that you want. So what that the whole idea behind that isn't to make you lazy behind the steering wheel, but it's to prevent driver fatigue where you're tired from constantly adjusting or, or, or doing all kinds of manipulations with the, the controls so you can kind of just drive the car, focus on driving. Um, one of the other new features that they brought into the CRV first before anything else is lane keeping assist. So um, the Accord came out with a uh, lane departure warning which beeps and lets you know that you're wandering out of your lane but lane keeping assist is actually going to allow you to while you have cruise control on and you have that feature turned on it will actually steer the wheel to actually keep you in the center of your lane. Uh, so what I've noticed uh, when I've driven with it on if you even just start to wander a little bit it'll just give you a little nudge here and there so you don't it's not a huge like oh it's it's driving the car for me <laughs> it's a little nudge here and there that you don't even hardly notice that just keeps you right in the center of the lane so you're not riding right on one side of the lane or the other side of the lane it just keeps you right in the middle of the lane so with that and the adaptive cruise control it really good, is going to reduce the driver fatigue it also has a new feature on that called uh, brake mitigation um, Brake mitigation doesn't physically break the car, but what it does is it uses your traction control to slow you down rapidly. So um, Honda basically tells us that it's not going to bring the car to a complete stop to prevent a crash from happening entirely, but it will slow down the vehicle uh, rapidly to lessen the impact that happens. So you still are responsible for driving the car and bringing your car to a safe stop. Um, but that's something that if you're distracted or somebody slams on their brakes in front of you uh, and you didn't see it, it will initiate that slowdown a lot faster than maybe if you would have kicked in yourself. And it is using that same radar technology in the front for the adaptive cruise control to, to kick that system into place. Well, Jeremy, I'm sorry, does that yeah. only work if you have cruise control on? Uh, not the brake mitigation. The brake mitigation works um, uh, anything over 25 miles an hour. Um, and the uh, lane keeping assist will only work with the cruise control. The adaptive cruise control only works with that, but the brake mitigation will kick in automatically anything over 25 miles an hour. So, cool. Any questions? Yeah. Um, so, some of the new things that are uh, on the inside of the vehicle. Um, if they had the leather before, um, one of the new things is they switched over to a perforated leather. Um, so it allows for a little better breathability. You're not going to get that hot, sweaty feeling in the summer. Um, just lets the air flow through a little bit better. It's not ventilated seats, but it does have the perforation. Um, Honda always has uh, kind of had their their models separated very easily, just yeah, LX, EX, EXL. Um, so um, that was one of the ways that they, they kind of brought it up to a little bit more luxury feeling. Uh, uh, feeling is having that perforated leather, that's a big difference. So when you go to the EXL, you're going to get the leather wrap steering wheel, leather seats throughout, and then obviously you get the heated seats um, because you also had that on the EX model. Just pop the hood. So um, this is the Earth Dreams engine. This is the direct fuel injected engine uh, that Honda switched over for. Basically, it's a better consumption of fuel. It burns it more effectively. You get less waste. Uh, it recirculates any waste, um, burns up more carbon, so you have less emissions coming out. Um, so it's actually leading the way as far as uh, low emissions. Uh, and then with the CVT, it helps with fuel economy too. So The headlights are a little bit crisper too. And then the fog lights on the 2014 uh, and older were round fog lights. Uh, they've switched to a square fog light with a chrome trim, just again adding to its luxurious uh, uh, look from the outside. And they did switch the grill out to match the truck body, uh, which is this wide band across here. So it's going to tie in with like your Odysseys and Pilots, um, and hopefully the new Ridgeline when it comes out uh, next year. So, any questions on that? Jeremy, did they make any upgrades to the radio in 2015 in the Honda CRV? 
Yeah. Um, when you when you went to the 2015 CRV, because of that lane watch and the push button start, you're getting a touch screen operated uh, radio for the EX and above. Um, so, and then obviously when you go to the leather, you're also picking up XM radio with the subwoofer. Um, so it does give you a more premium sound. Um, with the touchscreen audio, uh, it's going to interface a lot like your touchscreen phones. Um, there's a lot of touch swiping and, and pinch to zoom kind of stuff. It also allows for you to hook up um, an Apple iPhone to the vehicle um, with a special cable um, that's uh, made that Honda had actually made for the iPhone that runs the HDMI into it. So you can actually, for $60, download the app off of the Apple iStore. Um, to uh, run Honda's navigation onto your Honda through your iPhone. Uh, and when you're running that, it allows you to interface with the touchscreen radio as opposed to your phone. So your phone, you tuck it away, it's running it, it's, char it's being charged through the USB, and the HDMI cable is actually streaming the live uh, picture screen onto your touchscreen radio, allowing you to have your navigation right in front of your face and still listen to your music and still do all the things that you want but get you to where you want safely without having to spend the $1,500 to upgrade to a navigation unit. So what that means is basically you can buy the EX or above model at a much lower price and still run your navigation off of your phone uh, while you're using that. So, and obviously depending on whatever data plan you have on your phone is going to come into play when you're using the navigation. So you want to take that into consideration too. Is so. that $60 a one-time charge? It is. It's a one-time charge for the, for the app. So it'll update whenever uh, Honda is updating their maps through the app store. And, uh, and then the cord that you have to buy is, is a one-time purchase also. So once you buy that, it'll uh, hook up through your Apple Lightning cable. So it is only eligible um, through an iPhone 5 or higher at this point because that's what's running the Lightning connector where you can actually run out the HDMI cable. So no Android phones, unfortunately, at this time. Uh, it does also, with the touchscreen audio, do, it does allow you to also play video from your phone onto the stereo, but the car has to be off in park but with just the accessory mode turned on and then you can actually stream video through like if you're waiting for somebody and you wanted to actually have the sound coming through the car as opposed to through your phone and had multiple people watching it instead of crowding around your phone you can actually stream like YouTube videos or you know whatever videos you might have on your phone uh, uh, through the car on the stereo so uh, it does have a CD player still uh, in the CRV um, and you access that by pushing the eject button on the lower left hand corner uh, and the whole screen will tip out and the CD player is actually built in behind the screen. Uh, so I know a lot of people get in it and think that there is no more CD player, but there is a single disc CD player built in behind the, uh, behind the touch screen uh, radio. Uh, one of the other new upgrades that were for just the EXL and above model was the auto dimming rear view mirror. Um, so that was a big thing that um, you know, a lot of people would ask about on the CRVs that was never actually uh, an option before you had to pay to upgrade the, the rear view mirror to an auto dimming but now it comes standard on the EX I'm all about. Jeremy, I had a question. Yeah. Uh, there's this green button here on the dash. Uh, it says Econ on it. Econ? Could, could you talk about that Econ button yep. for us? Uh, Econ uh, first came out in, on the 2012 CRV. It was also available previously on hybrids only. Um, but on the 2012 and newer, uh, it would do three things to uh, affect your fuel economy. And that's what the Econ stands for, is economy. Um, so um, in 2012 and newer, it was doing, um, it would upshift your transmission to the next gear sooner. Uh, it would cut power to your air conditioner about 50%. And then it also smooths out your acceleration so you have a slower takeoff from a dead stop. Uh, so when you were using the economy, it would just, um, it would still allow you to override it by really putting your foot into the gas pedal or the accelerator to get moving fast uh, for an emergency situation. But right under regular driving conditions, it just helps that person who's not always thinking about fuel economy to be a more fuel efficient driver. Um, in 2015, because it switched over to a CVT transmission, it's not necessarily doing that upshifting to the next gear, but it is telling your uh, transmission to stay in a more fuel efficient ratio, so you have those slower accelerations and you are maximizing your fuel economy, but there's just no more gears to switch in between. It's still cutting power to the uh, air conditioner in half, and it's still smoothing out those accelerations, so um, it's still going to improve your fuel economy. Um, most of the time, it's more beneficial around town, obviously, because that's where you're doing more of your stop-and-go traffic. It doesn't do as much on the highway, because at that point, you're already in top speed. Um, but it is still cutting power to your air conditioner. So um, Honda's recommendation is on a really hot day, 
Uh, turn the econ off, let it cool down the, the cabin, and then turn it on because then uh, even in the econ mode, it can maintain the, temp the temperature. But you'll notice that on a really hot day like we've had lately, actually, um, it does take a long, long time for it to actually cool you down to where you feel. And we've actually had some people that thought that their air conditioner wasn't working properly because of that. So that's something as a salesperson you really need to point out to your customers to let them know that they can do that. And also, if they're driving it and they feel like it doesn't have that power, take a peek on the dash, too, to see do they have that econ button turned on because I did have a customer who had two Accords. One of them had the econ button pushed and the other one didn't and he thought that his Accord wasn't working the same as his wife's and he was kind of concerned and we, that's what we found out that that econ button was pushed. So just got to make sure you're checking some of those things so that you don't have a customer that is throwing up concerns because actually it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, as far as how much you can save, Honda won't tell us exactly because if you're already a really efficient driver, um, you might not save some as much as somebody who say is a little bit more of a lead foot driver. Um, you know that person is going to see a lot more benefits to it. But either way, leaving it on, I have a lot of customers that say they don't really notice that much of a difference that they wouldn't just leave it on all the time. So, so are we talking about air conditioning? Mm -hmm. Does this? Uh, I know a lot of people. Uh, some people are always hot, some people are always cold. Does it have dual climate control yeah. capability? Yep, as soon as you go to the EXL model, you're going to pick up the dual climate control uh, where you get to have a driver temperature and a passenger temperature. Um, any trim level below that is going to just have your, your mono uh, climate control, so you get your blue and red uh, with your fan speed adjustment. Um, but this does have the driver and passenger separate climate control. And then it will it will send a blend of the two back to the uh, to the rear passengers through that through that ventilation system. That's it. Is there any other questions, any other questions? from the K Wood sales force here? All right. Well, Jeremy, we want to thank you, uh, the K Wood sales force. I, I hope learned a few things today. And anybody that's uh, looking at this video on our website, uh, K Woods has been here for. Uh, going on a hundred years and it's the nicest place to do business in town. So come down and see us Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you